Hello, today I want to show you how to run your code lab, which includes the GPU or TPU runtime inside your uh, local VS Code. So if you are not familiar with code lab, it's uh, like a serverless uh, interface. You can, like for example, run from your um, uh, Google Drive. There is a code lab option. You can uh, start from there and you will, you will get it here. Uh, and, uh, um, I will walk you through all the five steps you need to take to set up, set this up and have it have the connection tested. Uh, but I will first walk you through all the concepts of why each step is needed for the next step. Then we'll actually do each step. So after the first step is to set up the Colab TPU runtime. Uh, once you open your Colab, then choose the runtime you need. You have a GPU and TPU. I don't know if there's a way you can use both at the same time or would you ever want. Uh, but I'll go with TPU. The steps uh, work for both GPU and TPU except the last testing step. Um, so I also have a, a Google Colab Pro, which is $10 per month, and you have better access, access and less likely to, uh, like your runtime will not stop if you close your browser, uh, if you have the Pro and it will last longer. Uh, I think you may have, like I have only access to TPU v2, uh, but the new, the latest version is already v4. Um, I think that's the first step. And the next step is to run the code that uh, I will link to this video uh, where you download some library that you need to connect to this remote host for later steps. Um, yeah, what most important from this step is you need to get the this uh, host address uh, from the output after running this uh, cell blocks. So the second step is to uh, install the cloud fire D uh, binary on your local computer, uh, which is very quick. I'll show you. Um, and then you need to update uh, your local SSH config file to know where this binary is located. Um, the next step is only if you are using a Mac, Mac has this uh, system security thing called a gatekeeper where you need to explicitly tell it that uh, it's okay, you can uh, use uh, apps downloaded by identified uh, developers instead of just the app store. Um, then the next step is to uh, open your VS Code and use install an extension called Remote SSH and connect to your code lab through this um, host address here. So the last step is to test this TPU, do some operation on TPU using both TensorFlow uh, a library and uh, PyTorch. Okay, so let's start. So literally just the uh, four lines of code, uh, you will need first, before you run this, you need to know which GitHub repo you want to work with. Uh, and yes, this needs to be your own repo. Uh, if you want to work others, just fork, fork first. Um, and uh, finding your own personal token is in your GitHub setting, uh, your, the branch, your email username of your GitHub. Um, once you've done that, uh, you can launch this qualifier D and this password is random. You can put whatever there. You just need to know what you put and you're gonna use it later. So from there, if, if this is the very first time to run this, you need to download this qualifier D, which I already downloaded. Let me show you. So if you click this link, it's using Argo, which is pretty cute. Um, so I forgot, download, you just download and move to uh, wherever. I don't think the actual location matters, uh, but you will need to know uh, where it is. I put it under, oh, sorry. Uh, actually, I don't know, I don't remember where I put it out, but I remember you, once you put it, you have to update the location to SSH config. So this is where I put it. Uh, oh, because that's where uh, binary usually go. Um, 
So this this part of the block is the part you need to update uh, of like it's given here. So it's inside the output after running this cell block, and you just need to remember replace this uh, cloud fire path, which is wherever you put your uh, the downloaded binary. So that's the first two steps we already did. So the next step is you need to modify your gatekeeper. If you just search in system preference, there is a gatekeeper. And you will go to this window and you just need to unlock it. And uh, this will allow not only App Store but also but also from identified developers. So if you don't do this step, the next step, the extension from remote SSH will throw error and it will not tell you this is the reason that causing the error. Um, okay, so that's the first the three steps. Now we are ready to connect to this remote host in the VS Code. That rerun it again. So you you can use uh, the regular VS Code, but I had a bug, but I don't really remember the bug anymore. So just in case, if you have any bug that I didn't um, mention here, then try use Insider uh, VS Code, which has a green icon, while the regular one have a blue icon. Uh, so. The next step is to so that's optional. If you only have if you have some bug that I didn't mention here, then please try inside our VS Code. Um, so the next is, I think. Uh, the next step is to install this remote SSH, which is this extension. Uh, after that, you can uh, just use this extension by. Uh, when, I don't know how it differs for Windows and Mac, but you can search like command uh, pilot, how to bring this up. Once you bring it up, uh, you can use this extension. And uh, here you need to type the host, which is given in from our very first step, which is this one. Oh, I think uh, I because uh, I was going back and forth and I didn't rerun this cell. So now I got a new, uh, you can rewind, this will be different every time you rerun this uh, address change. So now we again continue and this password is whatever you put here so I'll type my password and now you can open the folder so inside the collab the structure is always under content so that's why you need to go with, uh, back to content and uh, okay. I don't know why they ask you to uh, type password twice and trust everything. Uh, so you can see this is already mirroring all the uh, file structures there. You have sample, you have everything. Uh, so we made it to the last step. So you have already done all of these four steps now. Uh, the last step is to test uh, it's actually connected with the TPU uh, using TensorFlow and PyTorch. So I'll first go with PyTorch because it has some error and I don't really care because I'm going to use PyTorch anyway. 
So uh, you can find this example code. Basically, you first need to decide which level of test you will be convinced if it works. And uh, so this is a piece of code I found, I forgot, somewhere probably on TPU doc or something. Uh, it's using TPU cluster resolver uh, to show the connection. So you just copy there and uh, run this code. So it will show you error on this line. However, when it proceeds to this line, it still shows all the TPUs are there. All the TPUs are there. And uh, if this, this is the part I need to dig into more because the behavior is different in Colab. Uh, in Colab, it doesn't have this error at all. Like you can proceed on to this line rather than the accept uh, value error. Uh, so I don't need to look more, but uh, I'm not very interested at this moment uh, because through PyTorch code, you can actually do the operation. Uh, and that is convincing enough for me to show this is actually working. So, so this is all the testing I think you would need. So I'm not confident I covered every step in setting this up. So in case you have some uh, bug that uh, I didn't mention in this process, uh, please make a stack over flow post and uh, add the link uh, to that post in the comment. Thank you.